Hello everyone and welcome to Board Games with Nurgle Probe. Today we're doing something a bit different, it's not a review this time. Instead we're doing our first top 5 list of this podcast. And today we're covering top 5 collectible card games. So let's get started with the list. Enjoy! Alright, so before we begin, I actually just want to say that in this list there are, I call it the collectible card games, and in that I count uh, trading card games, so TCGs, uh, collectible card games, the ones that are named by a CCG, and also living card games, because all of those games have collectible components, even though they work in a bit differently in how they expand and how you trade and how you get cards and everything like that. But everything in those categories are counted for this so let's begin with uh, number five. Number five. My number five game is a game published by Fantasy Flight Games. It's a living card game. That's all they have at the moment, actually. Uh, one of their living card game lines, and that is Conquest. And the reason for this is one. I love the theme of Warhammer 40k. I love uh, sci-fi and I love that world and universe. There's a very rich story. There's a lot of things that you can take from that world and implement into this game. And not only that, but the game itself is actually pretty good. It's one of the few games that works with uh, area control. So basically you fight over seven, I believe it's seven different areas on the field and you need to take control of them. Each turn one player can take one as a point basically and these different areas have different icons on them and as soon as you, there are three different kinds of icons, a red, a green and a blue. I don't remember exactly the name of those different colors but there are three different colors and that I know. And as soon as you collected three worlds with the same three symbols. So if you have three worlds with three red symbols, then you win the game. So it's a competition just to, not only to get the symbols that you need, but also to stop your opponent to get the ones he needs. Because uh, at some point you're like, you have two red, but the two next planets that you will be able to take over will not be red. So you will be like, hmm, should I fight for these? Because he can't win by just taking these two and then just focus my resources on the planet after that. Or should I counter him and also take those cards? But then I might have to use my troopers to, you know, I limit my chances of taking the planet I need to win later and so on and so on. Uh, and it's basically five battlefields that you have to control all the time. So you play your units at different play, uh, spots on the board, uh, five different that are active. And then there is a fight at each position that has your warlord. And this is something that is very unique to this game as well, that you have a character that you just, well, it's basically you. It's your warlord, it's your character, and he visits those, these planets to fight himself, and they start the battles. Uh, also, the first planet... Uh, on the board that's to your right i oh it depends on which side of the board you're sitting on but let's for this example let's say it's to your right uh the first planet will always have a battle but you can only take it if you have the most i don't remember the name of them is it leadership icons tokens whatever it is if you have the most with your units there then you get that planet maybe i remember some rules wrong it's been a while since i played it and it's still it's my number five because i really enjoy the game conquest from fantasy flight games Number four. Alright, moving on to number four. This game, I believe it's actually published by Nintendo, and I've been on and off from this game. I've played it since I actually got the very, very first set of this game that was released, and that is Pokemon the TCG. And Pokemon is a world that I've, I've played the Game Boy game, and since then, well, I played the first Game Boy game when it came out. I was in middle school, I believe, and it was, it was so good. It was, like, the reason I had a Game Boy, basically, back then. I had a Game Boy before that. I played Tetris and all these things, but Pokemon really made it... I, you just realize that, wow, a Game Boy can actually have depth, um, games that have depth to them, and you didn't really experience that before that game. Not that I know of, at least. Uh, I played a few, like, Asian games that I did not understand because the symbology was weird that were kind of deep as well, but uh, like War, uh, which is basically the, uh, like, original advanced war game, um, which is great. But anyway, Pokemon TCG. Uh, the card game is simple, and a lot of people have said that this game, it's... Just the cards are too strong in this game. You can basically search your whole deck every turn for a card that you need, 
And uh, something that, you know, other card games, they usually call certain decks toolbox decks. This means that you can often search for the cards you need in the deck by having a card that search for a certain type of card and so on and so on. In Pokemon, every deck can have this, basically. And that's what I like about it. That's what I really, really like about it, that you don't have to focus that much on you know, screwing up your draws. Instead, it's about the strategy, what cards you take out at what point, what you use, and so on and so on. Lately, the game is a bit... that monsters is... Uh, that were the Pokemons. I guess they're not monsters, right? Uh, they're more like pets, I guess. Uh, has gotten a lot, lot stronger. The basic Pokemons, when I started, they had like 30, 40 HP. There were a few ones that were stronger, like 70, 80 HP, and th those were kind of good. Uh, now, a basic Pokemon can have almost up to 200 HP, and their attacks do like 150 damage for 2 energy, and it's just, the balance has changed a lot since I played. Uh, still, it, even though the balance has changed, uh, there's a less broken combos now, I guess. Back then, the, you had a lot of combos that were like just one-shot everything. You still do that, but it feels everyone has the opportunity to do that now, and uh, the decks and cards kind of work towards that to counter and to work against it, and so on and so on. So Pokemon TCG is my number four. It's a really, really good game. I have not played it. I don't have a collection of it at this moment, but I come back to it now and then, get a few cards and play it for fun, and I, I really enjoy it. I really enjoy Enjoy the Pokemon TCG. It's not a complicated game to learn, and everyone can enjoy it from new players to big noobs to uh, advanced players, and people that likes board games and advanced strategy games will enjoy Pokemon TCG as well. Number three. So my number three is Magic the Gathering, released by Wizard of the Coast. Yes, this is actually already mentioned it's only my number three so yeah but this game is probably the one i played the most of all of these games uh it's one of those games that you always come back to it's just so big it's so popular everyone that likes card games play it so you will always play it back in the day i used to play in tournaments i don't do that anymore now i mostly play uh magic the gathering online which i also have a series that i do on youtube actually where i cover some cheap magic the gathering uh, EDH decks and Commander decks for Magic the Gathering Online that costs five dollars. You can check that out. Uh, it's a great game. There's a lot of sweet mechanics in Magic the Gathering. The problem is that they have kept some of the mechanics that are not so good. And that is the problem that I have with this game. They have not... I mean, I understand that they don't want to change the basic game from what it is, because that's what people love. They have changed the rules a few times now and then. Uh, legendary rules have changed and uh, damage on the stack has changed. Uh, the stack in general has changed. But uh, if you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. It's it's not important. But the game has been streamlined a little, 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 little bit. But it's still still complicated for completely new players, I believe. At least if you get up to the tournament kind of, you know, thought about it and uh, the cards that you play at that level. If you just play for fun, it should be no problem just getting two decks or one... Uh, dual deck that you, they have now to get uh, to play with your friend and just enjoy it. Magic the Gathering is quite a good game. It's not as good as my number one and two though. So let's move on to that. Number two. And at number two we have a Fantasy Flight game again. One of their other living card games. So it's not Conquest obviously because I already mentioned that. And it's not Cthulhu, and it's not, um, what's that series that I don't like? Um, Game of Thrones. It's not Game of Thrones. So it's actually Netrunner. My number two is Netrunner, even though it was originally a uh, trading card game, like uh, Magic the Gathering. It was actually released by Wizard of the Coast, and it's the same designer as Magic. Netrunner is now a living card game where you just get expansion for it, and you can get, you know, all the cards you need. You don't have to look for them on eBay and trade them and buy them, you know, expensively from stores. You can just buy a pack and you get the cards you need. And that is one of the huge reasons that I like this. And I also love it because it's a asymmetrical card game, which means that both you and your opponent plays differently. Uh, as the runner in that runner, you are attacking your opponent who's playing the corporation. And you're trying to take his resources and points and so on and so on from him. So the runner in this game actually doesn't even play with points in his deck. The thing with this game is that you don't have life points like in many of the other games. Instead, you actually play with uh, cards that give you points. Uh, that I don't remember the name. Or, uh, what, what, what are they called? It's points. 
that I don't remember the name of. Why? My, my head is not with me right now. But you you have cards anyway that gives you points. Uh, and you put them in your deck when you're the uh, corporation. So these cards, you have to score them. And the corporation do it by putting them on the field. Everything that the corporation plays is face down. So your opponent doesn't know what you're playing where and what what it is and what it does and why you have it there and uh, you protect it by playing ice cards and um, these cards are basically cards you place sideways in front of those other cards towards your opponent and he can then attack them the runner player can attack those cards or uh, servers as they're called it's a really really interesting game the gameplay is amazing the asymmetry in this game means that in tournaments you will never have two mirror decks you will never meet the same deck as you're playing you will always face another deck and even though you both have the same runner deck and the same corp deck it doesn't mean that you're gonna play with the exact same deck against each other because you can't because there are two different kinds of decks for the different sides and so on <clears throat> anyway netrunner number two moving on to number one can you guess what it is number one and my number one it's a, a game that is currently published by arcane tinman and uh, it's a really, really good game. It's based on Magic the Gathering heavily. And actually, the World of Warcraft card game, they've taken some of that uh, resource management ideas from that game as well. And the game even have the uh, tagline currently, you need a little more than magic. And that is kind of a punch at Magic the Gathering, that they have a few more mechanics, they have a few more things that Magic the Gathering actually uh, took away from their game, like the stack, for example, uh, in certain ways. And uh, this game, The Spoils, or Spoils, I think it's called The Spoils, uh, added those things again. Yes, so my number one is The Spoils. It's a wonderful, wonderful tournament card game, as they call it themselves. Still, a trading card game but i believe that is actually trademarked by wizard of the coast so they can't use that so they call it a <laughs> tournament card game so they can call still call it a tcg which is very very clever uh so yes if you played magic the gathering you've basically played the spoils already but the spoils have a lot of few a lot of few it has a few things that are very different from magic and one is the combat you can attack with one creature at a time each creature also have a speed value so as soon as you go into combat you can also attack with several creatures creatures or I don't remember what they call them, characters I believe, at the same time in a group. And if your opponent then blocks with a group of uh, characters, you actually check the different speeds on the characters. So the ones with higher speed attack first and deal their damage and then the ones below that. So if they one if there's one with speed 5 and one with speed 4, the speed 5 will attack first. And this is something that is very very interesting because this makes combat math very fun and interesting within this game. And the universe is awesome as well. There's even Elf that talks Leet in this game. Yes, there is a car card actually in the game called Leet Speak, I believe, or Leet at least. And some of the cards have lore on them and uh, kind of story elements that have Leet Speak <laughs> as the text on the cards. And it's just amazing. Then we have the Arcanists that are kind of these Cthulhu crazy people that loves to just mess your day up and they take baths and brains and uh, oh my god there's so many good things and there's vampires in the game there is uh, but everything has a, like a jokingly side it, it's a joke basically they take everything that's awesome about a few things and they make fun of it in hilarious ways uh, yeah there's even a card called ass which uh, takes over your opponent's uh, in characters which is uh, kind of kind of alluring and fun so number one is the sports you should definitely check that out if you you haven't heard of it or if you haven't never seen it uh it's quite a it's quite a cheap game i believe uh if you can find it i don't know how many stores have it i know my local store has it so i'm lucky like that but yeah the spoils a tournament card game for all the players of 18 above age i guess because yeah the the themes can be a bit uh <laughs> um sexist i guess not all the time, but sometimes there's boobs and uh, grown-up jokes, but enough of that. Anyway, so my five games. Number five, Conquest. Number four, Pokemon TCG. Number three, Magic the Gathering. Number two, Netrunner. And my first game is The Spoils. Uh, and even though I don't necessarily play that anymore, I haven't actually followed with the expansions and everything that's come with it. It's still my favorite game rules-wise, and if 
you know, if it was bigger, if it was bigger than Magic the Gathering, I would definitely pick. Or if they were, like, equally big, I would pick Spoils over Magic the Gathering any day. But now there's just more players and there's a bigger activity uh, or a bigger group of players in Magic the Gathering. So it's easier to find tournaments and easier to find people to talk about it with and so on and so on. And that is basically the reason that I uh, play that a bit more. But yeah, thank you for listening, everyone. This has been Board Games with Nerd Pro, Episode 7, my top five uh, collectible card games. Take care, everyone, and I hope you have a great weekend. And I will see you next week. Bye-bye.